Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. We're going to do our second video and this is going to be exploring the scanning process a little bit deeper. Let's start looking at some of the options that are available for us to give us our best results. Now remember we're dealing with black and white negatives in this case, not a you know scanning a photograph or any of the sort. So there are certain things that you need to kind of look at a little bit more careful in your settings. We have negatives that are actually only one inch by one and a half inches. Now say you want to eventually print those maybe as a 13 by 19. So you have to consider what your PPI or pixels per inch resolution you need to have in order to be able to print something 13 inches wide in that one inch dimension so we got to do a little bit of math to give us the correct amount of pixels per inch but we're going to splurge we're going to go beyond that because we want to capture that film grain we want to be able to actually discern the film grain that composes our images remember film was composed of light sensitive silver halides or silver salts which when exposed to light became activated latent activation and then you develop it by reducing that in other words you're going to remove the salt part and then the leftover would be silver and it's actually silver particles that are tarnished that's why they look black so we want to be able to capture that okay that's what makes that print look like it came from film rather than a digital sensor all right so let's jump into the epson scanning software and we will explore those settings a little bit deeper. All right, so here we have our scanner application open, and I have already set some parameters here, which I saved as a setting, setting number one. And basically that just means that I'm gonna be scanning from film, and it is black and white negative. We want to also use a very high bit rate. Okay, we're gonna be scanning this in color but later on we're going to go ahead and turn that image which will look pretty neutral but we're going to turn that into a true black and white inside photoshop so we're going to choose 24-bit color now there are other settings that you can choose but again 24-bit is what i have been standardizing my process at we want pretty high ppi not dpi like it says there okay Please understand that DPI stands for dots per inch. That's what printers do. When they create an image, they are laying down multiple dots per pixel of image. Okay, So PPI is pixels per inch, and that's your vertical and horizontal resolution of your image. And dots per inch, or DPI as it is erroneously being used here, only pertains to the printer side of the process. So we got 1,280. Now, if we were going to divide that into 300 PPI, say we're going to print on a Canon printer, that would give us at least this kind of size. Let me go ahead and open a calculator here. We're going to enter 12,800, and we're going to divide by 300. We can do something that is 42 inches, 42.6 inches, okay? and so that is a lot that is a lot and that is only on the vertical dimension of that one by one and a half inch negative so yeah we're going to be actually capturing the film grain that's our goal now there are some adjustments that you can make prior to scanning but i like to just go ahead and do that after the fact so we're going to leave these alone basically you have a histogram that you can look at you have a curve adjustment that you can actually adjust as you work but i like to do that afterwards so we're going to set it so that i get the maximum amount of dynamic range out of that negative even though it may not cover the complete histogram when it is fully scanned i'll be able to handle that in photoshop what i do not want to do is accidentally cut off what could have been black detail in other words shadow detail or highlight detail there are also some color adjustments that you can apply during the scanning process but again we're dealing with monochrome so we're not going to deal with that at this point now later on when i start doing some color slides we'll go ahead and explore those options backlight correction we don't need that color restoration again we don't need that either at this point so let's go ahead and do our preview scan we have it set for a thumbnail 
And that's going to allow us to see each one of those little negatives as a single thumbnail. Remember, normally when you scan a document, you kind of get a global look and you have to then crop it before you do your final scan. But this is going to be pretty much automatically done for us and that's really neat. So we'll go ahead and wait until the thumbnails are created. And there we go. So let's see what we have here. We'll start with this one. We're going to go ahead and rotate it the correct orientation. Again, these are all my European photos. Everything is upside down. This is was shot in Belgium. Uh, I have actually printed that one in the darkroom. Uh, two young girls walking together on a cobblestone street. Now, what I could do at this point is to uncheck all of these and simply just pick one or all of them. I can actually pick all of them or just a single one. Notice that this looks almost like a two by two slide. Again, I love the way it does that. So I suppose if you click on here, then you can get a full size view. Let's go ahead and do, I don't know, we should do that one. I think that's cute. All right, so let's go ahead and choose the girl. We'll go ahead and check the little checkbox. We're going to make sure that we have the target correct location. We have our folder that we created yesterday. TIFF, there are some options here as well for Windows or Mac. Black and white, let's see, compression. No, we don't want compression. That is it, we're ready to scan. So, okay, and scan. Again, it's going to ask me again, make sure that you have the correct location for the folder and continue. It says when you scan with high resolution, the image size may be large or a long time may be required for scanning. Therefore, select an appropriate resolution setting. Well, we want that one. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and fast forward the process anyway. So you guys will not have to sit here and watch this happen. We'll be right back when it is done. Alrighty, I think it's about to finish the scanning process. When you have digital eyes technology activated, I believe it does a double scan. One for recording the actual image and then another scan for cleaning up any possible dust or embedded lint in the emulsion. Let's go ahead and wait until it is done and then we'll go ahead and open up Photoshop We'll take a quick look at it. Okay, we are done. Let's open Photoshop, file, open. Now, the photo is a little bit crooked as you can see, so we're going to go ahead and straighten that out. We're just going to use the crop tool and simply rotate the image until everything kind of looks correctly aligned vertically and parallel wise right about there now we are not concerned with that specular sky there but i really want to get rid of that that is very distracting to me so i'm going to go ahead and click on the crop tool and let's see what we can do here we're going to hold the shift key bring it down and then move it slightly like so Again, I don't want those grates right there either. They're very disturbing to me. So, okay, so that'll be it. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our histogram and have a look. I mean, really, the actual detail stops here. So, we need to expand that. I have a black, which I believe is right here. If you take a look at my info as I hover over that area, it's, it's very dark. Not quite black, but almost there. As you can see, it's not quite black, but right there, maybe that's almost black. Black would be zero, zero, zero. So that's good. We don't want a pure black. We just want to keep a little bit of the uh, detail, but we need to actually expand the contrast here because we want to take this point here and move it all the way out. We want to take this point here in the histogram and slide it to the right. Now, this area represents this portion of the sky and we could care less about that. So let's go ahead and go to image, adjustments, levels. Now you can make a copy of this. If you're very much a purist, you can make a copy of this, control J, and there's our copy, and we'll go ahead and just edit the copy. In Lightroom, you would make a virtual copy as well. So we'll go ahead and hit image, levels, and this is where we can adjust that contrast. And notice 
the slope and really it stops right about there so we're going to bring our white point all the way down right there like so midpoints we're going to move it around a little bit right about there so you see what happened it used to be like this this actually brought it to a more full dynamic range and we're going to take a look at this i see something that appears to be a scratch so these are scratches on my negatives oh my goodness look at that and again i i manipulated this this strip of film in the darkroom a long time ago so let's see what we can do let's see if we can do some magic here there's so much so many scratches now scratches are part of the grain structure you're literally you know scraping the emulsion so it's not like a foreign object that can be removed with the so-called digital ice now we can remove this one i'm using the spot healing tool right here click and hold and we will use our bracket key to enlarge our brush we're just going to simply click on it and it's gone now hopefully let's see if we can do this if we can get away with this it's, it's going to be magical let me go to the far left okay right there so we're going to click and then i'm going to hold shift and yeah i sort of did a fairly good job there it's, it's doing it it's doing it we're gonna do a new one so click and then maybe up to here shift and there that that scratch goes away that's a really amazing tool there i just got rid of a bunch of those scratches you can literally go if they are straight you can just click and then hold the shift key come across and click again and it is gone i didn't think that was going to work but it's really doing a good job and again you can size that brush as small as you need to do it even if there's you know details in some areas it'll still work watch boom you see that here boom beautiful now we're going to handle this one here ah, there's a little a little tricky one get rid of you but you got to admit this is this is totally magical this would not have been possible before but I give thanks to the Photoshop gods for having come up with this. And I think it was an application that was used, either offered by a third party provider, which then, you know, Photoshop bought them out. I believe that's what may have happened. You can adjust the size of your brush to either include more or less of a specific area, such as we're doing here. And we'll do this one here and here. And that should be okay. What it's doing it is sampling adjacent information and then making an intelligent copy, basically. And again, almost like AI. So that's that's what we're almost dealing with here. All right, so I think we're almost done. Yep, I think that's good enough. Yeah, I don't see any other scratches so basically i saved i literally saved this image i don't know what that is but it doesn't look natural so we're going to remove it there's a bit more to deal with here and again really uh this will probably not even be noticed on the final print but if you go through the trouble of fixing all of these problems that you don't have to deal with it you know especially when someone looks at it and says hey you seem to have some scratches on your um, image okay so let's go ahead and i'm going to adjust the brightness just manually like so and the contrast remember black and white of that era it was it was meant to be you know a little bit strong so 
Back here, this is very washed out. And again, that's in the distance, so we really do not care much. All right, so that basically brings us to this point. And I'm going to show you what the original looked like. That's what it looked like complete with the scratches and everything and that's what the new edited version of it looks like we can go further and play around with contrast and dodge and burning and you know anything that you want to do artistically to improve this even further but you get the drift um, we're going to go ahead and just simply go with this i can save this as a psd which would then save the two layers or flatten it and save it as a tiff over the original or save it as but you know most of the time we want to save that original image so we will go ahead and just simply save it as a psd locate it right on top here there you go and it will also save the two layers okay i hope you enjoyed this second video basically we just did a scan and improve the image quite a bit and you saw how impressive that spot healing tool is it performs magic i use it all the time especially when i'm restoring that is real photographs that are full of scratches and spots and dirt and that sort of thing i can go back and basically delete all of those little errors without affecting the actual image itself awesome all right on the next video we're going to go ahead and revisit the xp 15000 we're going to print a little bit more we're going to use other papers and i'm going to go ahead and prepare a couple of profiles as well and then we'll go back and explore some more negative scanning and possibly some transparency positive to positive type scans so i hope you enjoyed this one again and until the next time happy scanning happy printing Bye-bye, everybody.